morning students today we are going to see supplementary from unit 6 the name of the supplementary is the little hero of holland and it was written by mary elizabeth mapes dodge okay this is the name of the writer of this story the little hero of holland okay so now before we go to the story as usual we will have something about the author that is the writer See in your textbook, the name of the author is given only as Mary Mapes Dodge, but her full name is Mary Elizabeth Mapes Dodge. Okay. Now, she lived between 1831, she was born 1831 and she died on 1905. So, her life time is 1831 to 1905 and she is an American writer, American author or American writer. Clear? Now, she started her writing career only because her husband died in order to uh, run her family in order to take care of her two sons in order to be independent on her own she started writing clear okay now once she started writing her first collection of first publication was irvington stories this is the name of the first work which she wrote and she published and it was published in the year 1864 now when this work was published that is when irvington stories was published it became so successful and the company or organization which published this story or the publisher requested mary elizabeth to go for another writing another work so immediately the very next year she published a novel and that novel see this irvington stories it was popular only during her time okay but the second novel or her second writing named hans brinker or the other name is the silver skates this novel it is a classic novel because even now this is a very popular novel of mary elizabeth okay and this novel during her lifetime itself when she was alive itself it went for nearly 100 edition so this novel was so successful okay now after the publication of this novel she was offered um, the post of an editor associate editor in one magazine now after she was an associate editor in that magazine for some time then she was invited to be the chief editor of a magazine by name saint nicholas magazine and this magazine was mainly run for children okay now if you see if you see the works of mary elizabeth mapes dodge she write uh, she wrote particularly only for children okay she is uh, grouped up among juvenile writers juvenile means only for children okay so when this when they plan to open this magazine they invited mary elizabeth uh, mates to be the chief editor of this magazine and under her editorial ship this magazine was a very successful one and the main reason for the success of this magazine was her was her high moral and literary standards morally also she was of very high standard and literally also she was of very high standards and because of her editorial excellence the magazine attracted the attention of many popular contemporary writers like robert louis stevenson mark twain okay these writers also they started contributing for this children's magazine saint nicholas magazine so this is the uh, something this is something or this is the life of a writer or our author mary elizabeth mapes dodge she is basically an american writer and her life period is 1831 to 1905 she started writing only after the death of her husband in order to take care of her family her children and also to be independent on her own her first publication irvington stories 1864 seeing this success she was requested to go for another work and the second work was her famous classic novel hans brinker or the silver skates and this novel went for nearly 100 edition when she was alive itself okay then she was honored with 
associate editor post in a magazine after which she was again invited to be the chief editor of a children's magazine called Saint Nicholas magazine and the complete popularity or the success of the magazine it relied or only on her okay because of her high moral and literary standards and because of her editorial excellence many popular writers those who were there during her time like Mark Twain, Robert Louis Stevenson, they were invited, they were attracted to contribute something for the magazine on their own. So, this is about the author Mary Elizabeth Mapes Dodge. Okay. Now, this lesson or this story, it is very simple in language. It does not have much difficult words because it is of course children literature, no? So, it is very, it is quite simple in language. Here and there you have some words which may be new to you. So, I have just listed some of the words which are which I thought may be new to you. If you know it already, it is well and good. So, you do not know, please find out where you have these words in your textbook, underline them and take down the meanings. Okay. One such word you have is errand. Errand you have in the very first page of the lesson. Meaning of the word errand is, it is a very short journey. And what kind of journey is this means? Usually, this is a journey which is uh, undertaken in order to collect something or deliver something to someone and this is usually done on behalf of someone else okay so when you uh, when we have this word in the lesson you will be able to understand it better but the thing you have to understand about, about this word is it is a very short journey then tendered tendered means taken care of tend means take care of tendered means taken care of taking care of something okay early fall there is a word um, to refer to the season or the setting of the story early fall which means autumn autumn means the season in between summer and winter midway okay yes then tread means walk okay short steps walking walking very cautiously carefully rustled it refers to sound soft crackling sound rustled means it is a sound what kind of sound it is soft crackling sound example for this sound is when you have the dry leaves falling you will have some sound no uh, same time if you crush your paper any paper the rustle sound that is what the sound rustle sound then dykes and sluices you have the meaning in the textbook itself but still special terms and very important terms in this lesson okay the entire story is only around centered around these words dikes means it is an embankment embankment means artificial raised bank in order to protect the water from that is sea water or river water from flowing into the country or town or village okay so it is a raised bank artificial raised bank to control or stop the flow of water what water river water or sea water now sluices means if you have seen if you have visited banks okay or dams you will have a small door sliding door like thing okay gates or sliding doors that is what we call as sluices okay in order to allow the flow of water or in order to allow the movement of ships and boats from one side to the other side that is the meaning of the word sluices okay so these are some of the words which i thought you may find it difficult to understand the meaning so please find out where you have these words in the lesson underline them and take down the meaning Next, moving to the characters, again, very few characters, simple character, uh, character sketches given, much details are not given, but still you have to know which are the characters that are present in the story. The first important character or the main character of the story is the little boy, Peter. Peter is the protagonist. Protagonist means he is the main character and he is 8 years old. The second character, Peter's father. Peter's father, much is not given about Peter's father, but it is told that Peter's father, he works in the dikes. What is his work? He has to tend. Tend means I told you, you know, take care of. 
so he has to take care of the sluices sluices means gates maybe his job was to open and close the gates of the dikes sluices means gates gates of dikes dikes means the bank okay so the job or the work of peter's father to open and close the gates of the dikes okay and he has to take care of the gates whether the gates are working or in good condition all these are the responsibilities of peter's father okay then another character is peter's mother much is not nothing else is given about peter's mother but the character alone is mentioned and she comes only in the yeah now and then she comes but much details are not given then you have peter's brother and sister then peter's friend a blind man clear then finally a man end of the story you have this character and he is a mere passer by okay then finally you have the people of the entire town see if you see the characters who are really there or really part of the story are peter peter's mother peter's friend this man and finally the people whereas when it comes to peter's father and peter's brother and sister peter only thinks about them peter only talks about them they don't directly take part in the story okay so peter's father peter's brother and sister they don't directly take part in the story they are only thought about or spoken about by peter himself that's all the other characters they are very much part of the story so with this introduction we'll go into the story now okay ma now we'll go into the story now uh, this is a very simple story as i've told you in the beginning it is a children's story written for small children okay so simple in theme everything towards the end i'll discuss all that but we'll just first go uh, uh, ahead with the story okay fine now if you see the story begins with a little description about holland okay holland if you see it is there in the north western part of europe okay so holland is a country which is there in the north western part of europe if you see almost near the sea side okay so because of that reason much of the land of holland it lies below sea level okay so what the people of holland they have done in case if the sea starts to flood in order to prevent that sea water from coming into their land all over holland you can see people have built something called as a bank an artificial bank called as dikes that is the meaning of dikes i told you no so throughout holland you can see this dikes okay and this is the thing that is used to prevent the sea water from north to sea entering into the land of holland clear and all the citizens of holland they know the importance of this dike so always they are very careful about this dikes they preserve this dikes they take care of this dikes very carefully and they maintain this dikes very carefully and even small children any child of holland knows that if there is even a small hole in dike even a small hole in this dike will cause the entire country to be flooded and it will cause it will lead to great destruction so that much importance the people of holland they give to this um artificial bank called as dikes okay okay now after telling about briefing about holland then few words are told about peter's father when i told you the list of characters in the story itself i told you everything about peter's father but still i'll repeat it peter's father he is working in the dikes what is his job in the dikes you have sliding doors or gates okay those sliding doors or gates are called as sluices i told you no now his work is to maintain these sluices take care of these sluices tend that is the word we saw okay tend these sluices and also not only maintenance but his job is also to open and close these sluices sluices are nothing but gates sliding doors or dikes 
okay doors in the bank so his job is to maintain and open and close the door why should he open and close the door either to allow the water to come in a particular amount of water to come in or to allow the movement of ships from one side of the bank to the other side so that is the job of peter's father why peter's father this character has nothing to do with the story but why something about peter's father is told is he is the one from whom peter has known everything about this dikes sluices and about the water of north sea okay so only from this character peter has learnt about these terms what is meant by sluices what are slu uh, dikes and the sea water clear and often peter remembers that peter's father his father used to call the sea water as angry water and uh, humorously he he also makes a statement that the father thought the water to be angry water because always he is the one who had stopped the water from flowing into the land so maybe because of that the water might have seemed to be angry towards him okay so with that introduction we'll go into the story when the story begins it is one fine afternoon clear so now peter is playing now the mother peter's mother she calls peter and she is giving one small work for peter clear she assigns a small work for peter okay now i told you this is one afternoon here only we have the mention of the season you remember the word early fall early fall means i told you autumn season autumn season is between summer right in between summer and winter so on that particular afternoon peter was playing and the mother calls peter from his play and she hands over uh, hands a uh, cake okay to peter and she asks peter to take that cake to his friend who is blind and this friend he is living across the canal on the other side of the canal okay so now peter's mother she is asking peter to take that piece of cake to his friend who is there on the other side of the canal but when she is giving this work to peter she cautions him she gives him a word of caution that you have to return home before it gets too late or before it becomes dark in the evening that means what you can spend the entire day there or you can spend as much as time there with your friend you can play with your friend you can sit and chat with your friend but the only thing is you have to return back home before it is dark in the evening or before it is too late in the evening so with these words peter uh, sorry peter's mother sends peter to his friend now peter no he is a boy who usually likes to do jobs of the this kind what kind of job of going on a small short journey especially to meet his blind friend okay so very happily he starts um, <clears throat> going to meet his friend now on the way he sees what are, what are the things he sees he goes across the canal he goes across the dikes he sees all the sluices all these things he sees and finally he reaches the place of his blind friend and to his blind friend he hangs over the gate and the blind friend is also happy that peter has come to see him because blind man he is a blind man he cannot see anything on his own so whenever peter comes peter is the one who describes everything to this blind person everything about that is happening in the town okay about the dikes he he used to narrate clear about whatever he saw on his way to meet this blind man then about the sunset sunrise about the flowers about the sea water angry water as his father used to name it so all these descriptions it is only peter who used to narrate to blind man so whenever peter comes to visit him the blind man is also equally happy so peter meets the blind man hands over the cake he spends time with the blind man plays with the blind man sits and talk with the blind man so the time passes on suddenly peter remembers about the words of his mother what was the caution the mother gave him to return back home before it is too dark or before it is too late so immediately uh, peter just looks around 
and to his surprise it has started to become little dark and darker so peter understands that it is time for him to return back to his house so he bids goodbye to his friend and he starts um to his way back to his home okay now when he is on the way back to his home this is the important part of the story now when he went to his blind uh, when when he went to meet his blind friend he saw the same th- things only okay uh, dikes were there sluices were there flowers were there all the things were there and he enjoyed all that and he met his blind friend now he is going back to his home now when he is on the way back to his house he talks to himself okay when a person talks to himself especially in drama we call it as soliloquy that is a kind of monologue he is talking to himself now on his way back he is seeing so many things around him okay on his way back so about all those things he starts talking to himself especially the rain okay the previous day they had heavy rain because of which the water has swollen it has become more as if the water is going to break the bank and it is going to flood the entire town so seeing all these things he is talking to his own self he is talking about the rain he is talking about the huge water that has come because of rain and he is also happy that they have these gates that is sluices and dikes to prevent this water from entering into the um, town or land and he also thinks about or talks about angry water now as he is going on like this there are some other things which he comes across like blue flowers that are there grown on the road side and he happens to see a rabbit also treading you remember the word tread that word is especially used for this rabbit the rabbit will be treading because of this movement of the rabbit you will have that rustle sound you remember the word rustle sound i told no so, uh, sound similar to that of the falling of dry leaves or the crushing of paper rustle sound so again he sees all these things and he starts to enjoy them admire them blue flowers on the side of the road movement of the rabbits here and there okay now as he is seeing all these beautiful things he is reminded about the time he spent with his friend that day so again the moment he thinks about the time he spent with his friend he feels again very happy he is very glad about it he is again very happy that he had very good time with his friend okay then suddenly again it is becoming very dark and dark again the words of the mother comes back to him and it has become very a bit darker now so he starts to run to his home now when he is about to run back to his home he hears a noise some kind of different noise he hears and he stops for a moment and he takes some time to notice what kind of noise it noise it is then he understands that it is the noise of trickling water trickling water means water other either flowing out like a drops uh, flowing out in drops or flowing like a small very tiny stream okay so he stops to notice or to understand what noise is that then he understands that it is a noise of trickling water then he looks here and there to see from where the noise is coming and to his shock the noise was coming from the dikes so when he looks at the dikes he can see a small hole that has happened in the dikes in the beginning of the story itself i told you any small hole in the dikes means it is dangerous disastrous for the entire land or the country so now peter to his utter shock he sees a small hole in the dike and through that small hole only this water is trickling down or dropping down in a as a tiny stream okay so immediately he understands the danger of the moment and what he has to do okay so he understands the danger then as a very um beautiful boy okay sincere fellow okay he he thinks it it to be his duty okay he did not think that he has to run somewhere to 
call someone else and let them do the work that is not the way he thought but he thought that it was his duty to do something the very moment okay so what he does is he thrust his finger into the hole and he prevents the water from coming further okay any more okay the water then stops flowing now so with his finger he has thrust the hole and the water stops flowing into the land okay okay now for time being he thinks that the problem is over so as long as he is there he thinks that holland is holland is out of danger okay holland will not be flooded he will not allow holland to be flooded and he thinks that holland is out of danger and he just continues to be like that imagine dikes you know when you thrust your finger into the dikes you cannot be in a standing position in the same time you cannot be in a sitting position in a comfortable sitting position also so you have to be in a kind of crouching position C crouching position means bending on something uh, leaning on something with your legs folded that is not a comfortable position but this is the position now peter is there okay near the dikes he is uh, leaning on the dikes with his legs bent for time being he thinks that the problem is solved but as time passes by only he understands the real problem what is the real problem the real problem is around him everywhere it has become very dark imagine he is a very young boy he is just 8 years old okay so it has become very dark and i told you the season also early fall that is autumn season somewhere between summer and winter and it is also starting to get very cold it's dark it is cold so darkness is frightening him cold he is not able to bear it so these are some of the problems he is starting to face now then in addition to all these things he is having his hand his finger thrust into the hole for a long time so this is the position okay we'll be just stretching our hands no so for a long time he has kept his hand like that because of that what has happened to his arm it has started to ache pain not only pain he can feel a kind of stiffness in us in the same position if you are there for some time or for a long time you can you can feel the difference no your that part of the body will start to ache first of all then it will start to become stiff then you can feel a sense of numbness so all these things are happening to tom so as a little boy he is sorry not to tom to peter so as a little boy he is not able to bear all these things so what does he do he starts to shout for help now it is very late in the evening it is very dark also there is no movement of anyone around him so no one is able to hear him shouting for help so there is no reply for his shout so he understands that he has to stay in the same position in the same manner the whole night so helplessly and hopelessly he gives in now what is happening to his mother you remember peter's mother now the entire day she had been waiting and waiting for her son to come back and she had in fact told her son to come back before it is dark so every now and then like any mother she had anxiously looked at the roads of the dike to see whether her son is coming back but he did not see any sign of peter returning back so she decides that peter has stayed with his friend okay peter has stayed with his blind friend itself that night and for doing so she thinks that she has to scold peter when she returns back in the morning for staying back or staying away from the home without getting permission so all these things the mother thinks and decides and she closes the door the cottage door and she retires to bed okay now again coming back to peter okay now and then he is trying to catch the attention of someone or the other first he was going on shouting there was no reply or no response now he tries to whistle produce sound in the form of whistle but he is not able to whistle because it has become very cold now and he is 
teeth ha have started to chatter so he is not able to whistle also okay so he is trying to whistle but his teeth teeth are chattering so he is not able to whistle okay then immediately his uh, thinking goes to his home what will the people be doing in his house so he imagine he thinks about his brother and sister he thinks that they will be comfortably sleeping in the warm bed then immediately he thinks about his parents that is his father and mother then he thinks that they should be saved okay if it if it floods if the sea water floods then they will be under danger so he again thinks that it is my duty to save my parents i should not allow my parents to be drowned in the sea water so this thought again gives him some encouragement some sort of inspiration or motivation that it is his duty to save his family and not only his family the entire town okay so this acts a kind of boost for him okay then the whole night goes on like this the moon and stars from above they have a look at the small boy who is crouching on the side of the dikes the boy's head is bent his eyes are closed but still the boy is not sleeping he is only awake because he knows if he sleeps he may take away his hand unknowingly so he is very cautious not to fall asleep but still he has his head bent and his eyes closed but he is still awake only the whole night okay then the next morning when it is dawn okay a man passes by through the canal and he crosses near the dikes okay when the man crosses near the dike he hears some groaning sound a kind of moaning sound okay then the man looks around to see from where the sound is actually coming from then to his surprise he sees this small boy who is there near the dikes okay in in a kind of crouching position okay now the man runs to the small boy and he from the small boy the man gets to know all the information as to who the boy is what he is doing here how long has this boy been here all this information the man learns from peter and peter narrates him everything as to what has happened the previous day and night and peter immediately tells the man to call other people for help so the man immediately runs to the town he spreads the news to everyone so the alarm is sent everywhere all the people of the town they come to know about what has happened in the dikes and so the people started rushing towards the dike and they started coming with shovels shovels are nothing but it is an instrument which has which is in the form of spade okay it is usually used in gardening things like that and they all come with shovels and other things that are needed to mend the dikes so as soon as the people come they carry peter back to his house they mend the dikes and all of them they understand that the entire town was saved and all the people of the town were saved only because of the brave act and the sacrificial nature of peter okay so all of them were very thankful to peter and even to this date even till now in holland this small little boy he is remembered for his bravery and for his heroic deeds okay so that is the lesson so from this lesson what what are the things we come to know just as a small boy he has done so many things okay as soon as he saw the hole in the dike he did not think that he has to call someone else to mend the dike he thought it was his duty okay so that immediate decision taking okay that with in that small age itself he was able to do so much his bravery his sacrifice of spending the whole night in dark and cold instead of going and sleeping in a warm bed comfortable bed so all these qualities are highlighted from the character of peter his bravery his sacrifice his heroic deeds then what his patriotism and affection towards his family when he, the moment he thinks about his father and mother he thinks that it was his duty to save them not allow them to be drowned so all these qualities are highlighted in the character of peter so with this we have come to the end hope you all understood the lesson please take down the meanings
and this is a very simple lesson thank you